Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com, and today we're going to do a complete walkthrough of all the new features in Android Jelly Bean, aka Android 4.1. Okay, so when talking about Jelly Bean, one of the first things you have to discuss is the performance upgrades. They did a lot of stuff to the kernel and to other parts of the operating system, basically just to make things run smoother and faster. Um, they called it Project Butter uh, because it's quote unquote smooth as butter. Now, I won't say it's that smooth, um, but it is definitely an improvement from uh, Ice Cream Sandwich. So it's not necessarily just swiping, but also things like opening apps. And it's more noticeable actually when opening apps, they're a lot quicker to open. As you can see. Okay, another thing you'll notice is the little transitions that they've added. Um, for example, things kind of float. As opposed to that app just opening, it kind of zooms out from wherever the icon was. Same thing goes for when multitasking, if you tap on stuff, See how it zooms in? That's a neat little aesthetic touch. Okay, next up we have the lock screen. Now, in addition to the normal uh, face recognition, you can also have an X at the top there to jump out of it quicker if you wanna just go into your pin. Then, they also added a little feature called liveness check. Um, essentially what this does is it requires you to blink in order for the phone to unlock instead of just seeing your face. Why they added this? Well, because the facial recognition software couldn't really tell otherwise if you were an actual person or a photo of a person. So someone could essentially get into your phone by finding a photo of you on Facebook, holding the phone up to it, um, to your face on the picture, and it would unlock. So this stops that from happening or makes it much more difficult. You have to blink in order for it to unlock. Okay, next up we have the notification uh, system has changed a little bit. When you pull the shade down, you can now see uh, the entire message of a text message. Uh, and also, it'll, it'll instead of saying, you know, you have three new unread messages, it'll actually list each one of them and show a little snippet of what the text message is saying and who it's from. Also, email does the same thing. So you can see the, the subject and the beginning of the email, who it's from, who it's to, um, etc. In addition, uh, any screenshots that have been taken or MMS messages will also display uh, a preview of the image right here in the notification shade uh, as opposed to having to tap on it before you can see it. And lastly, the notification shade, they also added the time up here as well as the date instead of normally it was just the date. As far as the home screens are concerned, they did add uh, one quite useful feature um, and that's whenever you try to add a widget now, to a home screen, the app icons automatically move out of the way. And the same thing goes for when you resize them. One quick little change they made to the calendar is that now uh, holidays appear um, as their own separate calendar within there automatically without you having to enable it. Another thing they've added to Jelly Bean is the ability to see emoticons. So your friends with iPhones can send you emoticons and you can actually see them. Before you had to get a third party uh, app to do that, for example, GoSMS uh, and then download their GoSMS Emoji plugin. Um, but now it's built in automatically. One thing I can't figure out is um, how to send them back. So if someone can figure that out, let me know. But otherwise, in the meantime, you can at least see them now. Another little thing they've added to the messaging uh, is their new predictive text. So as you type, and it suggests these words here, um, the more you type, it figures out what words you use after other words, um, kind of figures out how you talk, I guess. And it will then suggest those words as opposed to just any old word. Um, essentially, the idea is that if you do this enough, you could literally kind of start typing a word, tap, start, tap, tap, start, tap, start, tap, and it'll actually do the whole sentence for you. Um, if it'll get that good at some point, that's the theory. Um, we'll just have to keep using it and see if it gets to that, uh, that level of prediction. 
Another thing you can do in the text messaging uh, is the voice uh, voice to text that you used to be able to use now does not require an internet connection. So you can now tap the voice. Hi, period. This is David, period. Testing out the new voice to text system. In the camera app, they've added uh, this neat little transition whenever you take a picture. Kind of floats over to the side. And the reason they did that is to kind of let you know that you can also swipe in the camera to get to your image. Within the music app, they've made a little addition um, that I can't really demonstrate for you very easily, but I can at least tell you about. Um, and that's that now the music, whenever you're listening to the music and you get a text message or a notification or anything like that uh, in Ice Cream Sandwich, it would actually cut the music out completely, play the notification sound, and then pr put the music back in, but you'd miss a part of the song. Now, what it does now is it actually just lowers the volume and then plays the notification sound over the music so you still can kind of hear the music. Um, not a huge feature, obviously, but a little thing that they did add that is a nice touch. In the Play Store, they have added the addition of magazines and television. So now you can actually buy uh, digital editions of your magazines that you like and episodes and seasons of television. And Google, not to be outdone by Siri, has added their own sort of Siri competitor to Android. If you hold down the home button and then swipe up, it brings up the new Google search. Uh, you can actually say uh, the company's name in order to bring up the voice feature and then talk to it in the exact same way that you kind of do with Siri, uh, where you can ask, you know, uh, what's the weather going to be like? Can you set an appointment and remind me in 30 minutes to do X, Y, Z? Um, call this person, text this person, email this person. All of those kind of basic features that people are mostly familiar with with Siri. So, for example, Google. How tall is the Eiffel Tower? Remind me in 30 minutes to stop doing this review. Setting alarm. Lastly, Google has added what are called Google Now cards. Um, these are built into the Google search system. And essentially what they do is they provide you with these little cards of information. Uh, that are based on your location, the time of day, uh, kind of your normal schedule even when you go to work, when you come home, that kind of stuff uh, to help kind of make your day a little bit easier. So for example, we'll bring up the Google search. So here are some of the sample uh, cards. For example, the weather, uh, and that can come up, you can set it to come up every morning or every evening, and the evening one will show tomorrow's weather, the morning one will show you today's weather, Traffic, you can have it set, um, you know, for whenever you leave work, that kind of stuff. Same thing for public transit. It can tell you when the train is coming, when the bus is coming, where the bus stop is, all that fun stuff. Flights, whenever you search for a flight, for example, you know, you say the JetBlue Flight 47. Um, after you do that search, whenever it gets close to that time for that flight, it will remind you, let you know if it's delayed, um, etc. with a little card, kind of like that. Same thing goes for sports, uh, and you can actually put in settings for your favorite teams. Uh, and when those games are happening, or when they're bef before or after the games, it can either remind you that the game is on, or it can just tell you the score once it's done. Same thing goes for next appointment. For translations. Uh, and whenever you're traveling to a country with a different currency, it knows this, and it'll actually tell you the conversion rate. Uh, again, also, when traveling, it'll tell you things like the time back home. And this one's a little interesting. Whenever you're nearby certain places, it'll actually let you know that those places are there. You can control, to a certain extent, what places it tells you. You can dismiss certain places so they won't show up again, uh, etc. And you can also 
check into those places, which is a nice little reminder that uh, Foursquare and Facebook probably should take notice of. Okay, and that's it for our quick walkthrough of Android Jelly Bean. If you do have any other features that maybe you've noticed that I haven't mentioned, please leave them in the comments beneath uh, this video on our site so that others can um, experience them and check them out. Thanks.